What's going on YouTube? JT is Jabron here and welcome back to another edition of my Godzilla combo we're using. In this video, we're going to be talking about Godzilla Rivals versus Space Godzilla. Now, this issue is a one-shot. It is written and drawn by Matt Frank, uh, most notable for working on the Godzilla Rulers of Earth comics. Like, Matt Frank's a pretty well-known artist within the uh, Godzilla community, I guess. I do remember seeing his booth at G-Fest this past year, but this legitimately, I think, is his magnum opus in terms of artwork now the story and some of the kind of written stuff like i didn't get quite as into i think there's a little bit of confusion but in terms of artwork my goodness this is visually absolutely spectacular from start to finish um, the world itself looks kind of unique and pretty cool you get some monster action you this is a space godzilla focused storyline um and then there's also some other stuff kind of going on uh in the background as well but like my god the art in this comic book looks spectacular so that's where the heightened praise is and plus space godzilla's menacing characterization is here on point there's one moment in particular which was kind of surprising that was like jesus uh just to show how evil and like hardcore space godzilla is something that kind of distinct wishes him from Godzilla in a way like Space Godzilla there's no ounce of kindness within Space Godzilla it is pure carnage so anyways uh the story of this time around it's they kind of show they use this little uh, bit of like an ancient relic if you will that or this artifact that tells the story of Space Godzilla now I read this issue a few times, and I also picked up the uh, physical copy of it as well. There was a little bit of confusion on my end, like trying to figure out like what exactly was going on in some ways, but I did read the description of the issue afterwards through the Comixology app that kind of gives a little bit more context into what's going on, and that helped clarify a lot of things. I just think in terms of the comic, there's a few things that could have been orchestrated a little bit more clearer, because uh, like I said, the ancient uh, relic kind of tells the text in a bit of a like an old English kind of sort of way if you will so basically the gist of it is there's this alien planet here and there's these kind of like different factions going on there's these people that worship like the shard or whatever which is like in terms of like space Godzilla or whatever like that's part of like his crystals or whatever crashed on this planet you have half the population that worships it like a god and the other half that's kind of against that if you will and this draws out space godzilla who comes in and unleashes holy hell amongst this planet like i said the artwork here is phenomenal and you get some monster action and space godzilla just like fucks up this entire planet that's pretty much in essence what the story is and we also get one one in particular where they do find this one uh crystal shard if you will uh that was being worshipped and space godzilla goes to grab it and we come to find that it's a little baby space godzilla oh isn't that so cute now he's just like godzilla who has his own son but no space godzilla doesn't take any of that shit like space godzilla literally murders an innocent looking little baby kaiju like just crushes it with his bare hands and I, the first that really kind of took me off guard if you will like it was so hardcore and like badass i was like oh my god like space godzilla's a menacing like asshole in this thing and um like i said it kind of goes through that i'm trying to skim through this really quickly uh because i i think you definitely should check it out and kind of read it um uh if you want to see like all the kind of cool stuff that's within this comic book but yeah so <clears throat> from an artistic perspective i think this comic book looks absolutely astounding from the first page to the last there's a little bit of confusion with the narrative which i think the description of the issue kind of helps uh, make more sense of it. But again, if you're just reading the comic book, there may be some confusion as to what's kind of going on with the backgrounds with the alien people and all that stuff. But it's not enough to kind of like fully like take away from like what really works in this comic book. And like I said, it is the really incredible artwork. Uh, it's the menacing nature of Space Godzilla uh, that really kind of sets this thing apart where it's, and plus, like I said, the, the story itself, like in the setting of it is kind of cool because we're setting an entirely alien, uh, this this an alien planet, if you will, and Godzilla is not really in the story. It's fully a Space Godzilla story. And to me, that's always fun and exciting because like there's all these other worlds and planets within the Godzilla universe that never really get to get explored all that much. I mean, we know about the Exilians and we hear about all these other stuff, but it's it's kind of rare that we get to see like other planets um, outside of mainly the comic books uh, in terms of Godzilla stuff. And having Space Godzilla appear 
on another planet and unleashing hell there, much like Godzilla sometimes does on Earth, I think that was actually really kind of cool. And that one moment that really sets Space Godzilla apart from Godzilla, I think, is that moment where he just crushes that baby in his hand. I mean, this is like a baby Space Godzilla. This is probably like his kin or something like that. Like, another member of species. Space Godzilla's like, nope, I do not care. He crushes it. Whereas Godzilla, he's the big protective, like, dadzilla. Like, I mean, he loves his kid. He he shows tough love, but he's always protective of, like, another member of a species that kind of sets him apart. But Space Godzilla is the total opposite right there. He just crushes it with his bare hands. And I'm like, oh, good God. Like, that to me is, like, the most what-the-hell moment of the comic book. But, again, it goes to showcase this real evil, menacing nature of Space Godzilla. And we get to see his various abilities and all sorts of other kind of cool stuff sprinkled in throughout the comic book. And, like I said, it looks really, really cool. Uh, is our, We don't really get much in terms of, like, the alien characters and all that. I mean, some of the text is kind of done, like, in that alien language. There's no real narrative folk like there's not really much in terms of their characters that we like get the chance to know them or anything like that because again the way the story is told is in this like ancient like relic tablet if you will that kind of tells the story um so we don't really get the time to get to know any of the alien uh humanoid like characters in this thing to kind of like drive the narrative forward it's kind of more of a visual thing think back to like the likes of godzilla and hell which in my opinion is still my favorite godzilla comic book of all time because that one is just told strictly through visuals um but this one is mostly that but i mean there's the text in that too but it's the visuals and like the, the storytelling in that regards to what we get to see with space godzilla like on full display here that really makes this comic book stand out like i said i think this is matt frank's magnum opus it's the best work he's ever done uh in terms of godzilla comic books so if you're a fan of his work i say check this thing out uh it really is uh spectacular like from start to finish just kind of looking at this comic book so i can't give it enough praise i say check it out i picked it up on digital i picked it up in physical is it my favorite of the godzilla rivals uh comic books uh the artwork might be my favorite of the ones i've read so far i have to kind of go back and look at the other ones again maybe not so much the story i think i like the godzilla rivals versus king adora storyline the most mostly because that one had kind of this like planet hulk but like planet godzilla aspect to it where godzilla is kind of like a uh, taken to another planet and used as like a gladiator i thought that storyline was kind of cool and would have made for a really interesting movie but i actually wouldn't mind seeing some sort of follow-up to this one shot that's the only issue with these rivals things is like they have an interesting one shot on display but sometimes there's just not enough time to tell uh, the story within the amount of pages that they have. And I wouldn't mind getting a couple issue mini series, like really kind of telling, okay, where does this take place in the Godzilla years? Like, I want to go more into space Godzilla's origins, if you will, in some regards. I want to see these other planets. I want to see like how space Godzilla more can to be. I mean, there's a couple theories if you watch the movie, because they explain, oh, it was, maybe it was Biolante or maybe it was Mothra cells or something drifting into space or whatnot. Um, I mean, that's kind of the explanation they gave for Space Godzilla, so we have to kind of go based off that. But I want to see a little bit more in terms of that with Space Godzilla. I want to see him off into the galaxy, like, unleashing hell. Uh, whereas Godzilla is confined to Earth, Space Godzilla can kind of travel the universe. And by God, I want to see more Space Godzilla. Uh, I really like Space Godzilla. I know some people poke fun of the name and poke fun of Godzilla over Space Godzilla as a movie. But Space Godzilla as a kaiju, I think, is really awesome uh with his abilities and the stuff that he can do like he can travel to different worlds uh he's just mean menacing i mean like i said what he does to that infant space godzilla if you will uh I, i'm assuming that's an infant space godzilla is just just oh my god i mean whereas junior or uh, manila and all that are kind of born from eggs like space godzilla is literally like baby space godzilla is just a crystal shard he didn't even have a chance to kind of grow up or anything like that space godzilla just saw him as a potential threat and just unleashed holy hell against him and like i said that's that's the moment of the comic book that's really going to stand out i think amongst most people because it's pretty hardcore but uh anyways i have rambled on long enough i say check out the comic book it looks really fucking cool so yeah if you're a space godzilla fan like me this is definitely a must read uh like i said there's a little bit of narrative confusion on my part trying to figure out a lot of the, like the background of what's going on here uh, but again, reading the description kind of made some clarification as to what the story was showcasing with the, like, the religious kind of cult aspect of it all. Um, but again, like I said, uh, it's the visual storytelling that really kind of, like, makes this comic book stand out with Space Godzilla and his various abilities and such. So, anyways, uh, go check it out. Uh, I got one more Godzilla comic book review, which I'm going to talk about right after this one, so stay tuned. And as always, take care now, bye-bye then, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.